last time we mentioned how we have this template.py file, the file that's auto auto generated from Qt Designer, and we mentioned how uh, we can't make any changes. So warning, all changes made in this file will be lost. So last time I talked about how don't make any changes to this file because if you're going to go back into Qt Designer and maybe in the future add a button or do some extra stuff. It's going to overwrite whatever changes you make here so you don't want to touch this file so let's get into understanding what we can do uh, to actually play around with this file because the issue is we have our GUI we have our interface but the problem is once we uh, actually press any buttons no actions occur so we just have this GUI and it doesn't do anything it's just there for looks so I'll show you in a couple of seconds, but first let's make a new file. So we're going to make a new file called template sub.py, okay? And I've already went ahead and made it. Uh, and so this is the code. So what I'm going to do here, yeah, so this is the code. Let's bring this more towards the middle, okay, cool. So I'm going to include this code in the description, so you can just copy and paste it into your new Python file. And by the way, you can name this whatever you want, you can call it template. Um, subclass, template, my code, uh, I don't know, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. But whatever you do, make sure it's in the same directory as your uh, P, the other py files. So I have here in template tutorials, I have my, oh, I don't know what this is. Let's see this. Oh, it's just empty. I'll put that in the trash. But um, so we have our py file, the one that's auto generated, and then I have my sub file. Uh, and the reason you want to make it in the same directory is because you're going to actually import a class from the template.py file. You're going to actually import this guy, UI main window. Okay. So let's quickly just look over this code. Uh, personally, I don't, I don't, I, I never really spent much time understanding what's going on here, really. Uh, it's really just a matter of copy paste and then you can go ahead and do whatever you want. Generally, uh, throughout, I guess, computer science or computer programming, you're going to come across a lot of code that you don't really understand or at least that's that's how I feel. Uh, but you don't have to understand all the code and I don't think anyone really understands everything. So just try to understand what you need to know in order to get to where you want to be, okay? So uh, so we have here, uh, let's initialize it, open it, okay, and then execute it, okay? So now let's run this code, okay? So I'm gonna do Command B. Uh, ignore this, I don't know what's going on here. I think that's from previous. So Command B. Look at that, it opened, right? This is our template user interface. You'll notice it's it's uh, black or in gray in the back. And that's because um, the display of my MacBook is actually on the night mode or the dark mode version. So that's why it's like this. But uh, once we deploy or actually finish the whole application and release it, it'll end up being white uh, as we made it on Qt Designer, okay? So again, see, so you can type in here, type whatever you want. Press edit, right? All these buttons, they don't do anything. And that's because we haven't really explained what these buttons should do upon pressing. Qt Designer only takes care of your user interface, its look, okay? So our code here, now we're going to take care of basically the user experience, right? Or what does this thing actually do? Because as of now, it does nothing, right? It's basically useless. It just looks, it's just a matter of appearance. So we're going to go through uh, something called triggers and actions, okay? So a trigger is when you do something to the interface, when you actually do something on the uh, program. So for example, if I click edit, that's a trigger. And the trigger, when we code it, you would, press, you would type something like um, edit button pressed, right? Pressed is, or clicked is a trigger. And then your event is actually how you want the program to respond to that trigger. So when I press save, I want to have that file saved, okay? And when I press edit, I want this uh, box to be editable, right? I want to edit. And when I press generate, I want the letter to be generated. So the action of actually clicking generate is called a trigger. And the response to that, which usually happens at the back end, and then something might pop up to the screen or whatever, that is the event. And so that's going to be the just of this code or the objective. The objective of this program is to implement the triggers and events 
or the triggers and events or actually trigger uh, implement the events that respond to triggers of the user interface so this is where you actually get into the nitty-gritty or explain what you want the program to do and so that's what we're going to go through in the next tutorial